we're so fired up to be with you, Courtney Lyle, alongside the Hall of Famer Carolyn Peck. Brooke Weisbrod is wondering around the arena for us as well. When you think about the SEC tournament, how do you describe this? Oh, let me tell you, it is the pressure cooker because there's some teams that are playing for their lives. There's some seniors that are playing to continue their career. And look, this could have major implications on the NCAA tournament, how they finish in this tournament. Yeah, well, this matchup is going to be a really fun one, too, because these two teams, the last three meetings have been decided by three points or less. So it's been a battle every time, starting with Auburn. When the, you talk about the Tigers, you can't not talk about Honesty Scott Grayson second in the conference in points. Well, and Honesty Scott Grayson has been that player this year that has stepped up for Johnny Harris. And when she is reminded of how close they've come but fallen short to Arkansas, I expect her to step up big. She's a three level scorer. She can take it off the bounce, mid range, shoot the three, and she will often get herself to the free throw line. She'll be a handful for Arkansas today. She is at 20 or more points 10 times, including in the first First meeting against Arkansas, 27 points against the Hogs. Okay, for the Razorbacks, Brooke Weisbrod, man, they have had so much rotating personnel this season for Arkansas. Yeah, they were dealt with another blow to their lineup this week. Sailor Poffenbarger, as you heard, is out with per, uh, concussion protocol, excuse me, and she will not play tonight. Poffenberger was bringing near double-double numbers to the lineup every night and versatility, playing both the one through five spots on offense and defense. So now with her out and SEC freshman Talia Scott, who remains day-to-day -day with a family concern, the Razorbacks will look to stop their four-game losing streak and have Mike Neighbors says get some separation during this week. And Sailor, I mean, the rebounding numbers, Carolyn, 11 rebounds per game. How do you replace that? Everybody's going to have to do a little bit more for the Razorbacks. They have got to box out and not allow Auburn to get to the offensive glass. So here we go. One of these teams moving on to the quarterfinals to face LSU, the defending national champion, tomorrow. And into the hands of the Hogs it goes. And Auburn is going to start out in an aggressive man-to-man -man defense. That's the thing that Johnny Harris has always had about her team's tough defense. Yeah, that's their calling card. Started when she was an assistant at Mississippi State under Vic Schaefer, too. The turnaround, the bucket from Miriam Dowda. Auburn's a starting five. Yeah, honesty, Scott Grayson, she's awesome to watch, but Jemiah Mingo Young, she makes this engine move for Auburn. Look, she's one of the most experienced point guards in the SEC and has played for three different teams. So she knows the pressure that brings this SEC tournament brings. There goes Jemiah Mingo Young at the free throw line, rebound into the hands of Arkansas. So with no Sailor Poffenberger, it is the true freshman, Jenna Lawrence, number 34 in that red jersey for Arkansas, getting her first career start. And I think that Mike Neighbors is going to play through Miriam Dowda. She's got the size height advantage. Go inside out. That can open up things for the guards on the perimeter. That's a good sign. Michaela Daniels, the veteran leader. This is her team. She hits a big three in the corner. And what did Nikki Fargus talk about? The three-point shot could be the great neutralizer for what you're lacking in bodies for Arkansas. If you could knock down threes, you'd give yourself a chance. Well, you mentioned Auburn known for their defense. Arkansas has been known, especially under Mike Neighbors, for the three-point shot. They are not afraid to fire one off at any time. Look, I think that his motto is, you get a good shot, put it up before you turn it over. So it will not be deep into the shot clock that Arkansas is going to wait before they pull the trigger. Shaw loses it driving in and there's Mike Neighbors in his seven, seventh season. This is the fifth different starting lineup and that's the most starting lineups he's had in one season in his career. Well, you know, you normally when you're watching Arkansas teams play, he pretty much will keep the st same starting lineup and everybody understands their roles, but because of players being out and injuries, it's been really hard to have enough players in practice to find that consistency. Mingo Young asking for some help, and there's going to be an offensive foul, and that'll be on Taylor Collins, her first. Johnny Harris, what a season. Most overall and most SEC wins for this Auburn program since 2018-19. She's in her third year. Johnny Harris has done a terrific job in building a culture 
And understand this, you can score all the buckets in the world, but you're not getting on the floor if you don't play defense. And now to have the balance of being able to score it and stop teams, that makes Auburn pretty dangerous. There's a nice look from Michaela Daniels, but the putback by the true freshman, Jenna Lawrence. And I think we're going to see Arkansas change up their defenses. They're going to dare Auburn to take that shot from the outside. There's Yakaya Milton. I like that freshman. She's getting another back-to-back -back start, started their last game against Florida. Look, and this baby girl didn't turn 18 until Valentine's Day of this year. She's a youngin'. She's a young one. Welcome to the SEC tournament. In a 3-2 zone defense, Arkansas is. And the shot that's going to be there is in the corner. That's a two from Honesty Scott Grayson. Dowda is 6-4. There's not really anybody that can match with her for Auburn. So the high-low pass, especially from the middle of the floor, is going to be there. Now, how often will Arkansas look for that, make the defense collapse? Then that's when the three-point shots can start opening up. Tamara so Spencer looking to inbound up top to Dowda. Now, Dowda can shoot the three, too. It's not just her inside game. You have to be able to shoot the three to play at Arkansas. <laughs> That's the <a> requirement. <laughs> Absolutely. And that's a traveling violation on Yakaya Milton. This Arkansas team trying to bust out of a four-game losing streak. Not in the tournament field right now, according to Charlie Cream. Jenna Lawrence, the patience, too, to shake the defense. All five players for Arkansas, Dowdy included, can put the ball on the deck, right? And so that's forcing Auburn to play with this small lineup. And instead of using the size, putting a Savannah Scott inside to be able to use the length, and then they're going to run. Arkansas running in transition, though, but Dada, she's got to finish that one. You can't get a much easier shot than that. Yeah, Arkansas can be super dangerous in transition. Too much on the three from Scott Grayson. You know, I think this night session on the second day can be really tough because you've watched teams get upset. You've watched teams not play well. You've watched other teams play well, and it can have cause you to kind of second guess how you're going to play when it gets to be your time. And both of these teams playing their first game of the tournament. Collins short on the jumper. And Michaela Daniels coughing it up. Milton by herself. Lay in. Points off defense. That's what Auburn has got to rely on. Till things get settled down to where they can execute in the half court. Their best bet is to try to get deflections or off rebounds and run. They average 21 points off turnovers on the season. Three seconds. Spencer going up off the window, no. And it'll stay on this end with Arkansas. Well, we've talked a lot about Auburn's defense. It's their calling card. They hang their hat on it. It's in Auburn's DNA. We've already seen that defense show up a couple of times. We go a little more in-depth on the D for the Tigers when we come back.
When Johnny Harris took over this Auburn program three seasons ago, she her requirement, you have got to play defense. And that it's in their DNA. It's all about Auburn now with their D. We learned that when we play our style of basketball for 40 minutes, tough, physical, that we can play with anybody in the country. Jemaya Mingo Young with her defensive effort. The steal gets fouled, sealed the deal. Angel was coming down the paint. The time was ticking down, and I was just there to get my hands on the ball. That was probably the play that sealed the game. Zippy Brown has it blocked by Odyssey Scott Grayson. Ball game. That's our bread and butter defense, so uh, we take pride in it. Those last seconds, we knew we had to get a stop. We couldn't let a shot go off. It's defense that closes out this game on the road. We just want to, um, you know, put it extreme pressure. Just try to take away what the opponent wants to do. This Auburn defense, one of my favorite stats here. They are holding SEC teams to 11.4 points per game below their season average. Like that, and that's talking about some high octane offensive teams in the SEC. But Johnny Harris, she emphasized, she has emphasized defense from the day that she took the job coming to Auburn, Alabama, that you were going to play defense and everybody was going to buy in. And also she said, yes, it's one on one accountability, but you're not on an island. You got to be aware of what your teammates need as well. If they're on the ball, you got to be ready to rotate the talk, the communication, the total chemistry of what it takes to have a very successful defense. I think she's got that worked in. That's going to be an offensive foul on Miriam Dowda. And I think one of the great examples of Auburn's defense that we've seen this season was when they upset LSU mm. on January 14th. They won 67-62, and you saw it when we flashed back there, the steal by Jemiah Mingo Young right out of the hands of Angel <laughs> Reese at the end of the game. Yeah, when last year Poa went down on the block and then left, Mingo Young stayed because she knew that Angel Reese was coming her direction, and she just snatched it. Jalen Collins underneath it bounces around. And Lawrence is going to fight for that rebound. Jump ball, possession arrow stays with Auburn. Right now, Arkansas is holding their own. They're plus two in the rebounding category with Poffenbarger being out of the game. And if you're just joining us, Sailor Poffenbarger, who is their leading rebounder and leading three-point shooter, she's hit more than anyone else on the team. She is out for this game in concussion protocol. An Arkansas team that was already shorthanded. Talia Scott did not make the trip, dealing with a serious family issue still. Up and in off the inbounds from Sydney Shaw. Yeah, I talked to Mike Neighbors because I have watched Arkansas play, and in some games they look really, really good. And then some games they look really, really bad, and he would agree with that. And he said it all stems from their defense. They've got to play solid defense, and then offensively, they need to drive the basketball with the intent to score, not just drive to create. That's when things start going bad. Rashawn Bostic with the kick out. Now I want to see Bostic, and so does Johnny Harris, number 12 in white, shoot the basketball because she can get herself open, but she has just been so hesitant to look for her shot. There's Caitlin Duhon. Good to see her back out there. Brooke, I want to bring you in as a guard playing against this Auburn defense. How do you go after it? Well, I never played in the SEC, so yeah. I can only imagine how yeah. difficult it is to go up against that. But I mean, I think you just got to be patient. And Carolyn, like you said, it starts with defense. I mean, you're not going to wear anybody down until you start showing up on defense, too. And then it's like, that's where you get your confidence from. Well, the biggest thing you've got to do is you've got to attack pressure with pressure, whether that be backdoor cuts or put your head down, drive to the basket. But you got to finish layups when you get that yeah, opportunity. Yeah, that was a great look for Carly Keats. Couldn't go through. 6-0 run here. into traffic, running out of time. Scott Grayson in and out. Go, 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 go. 
This matchup between Bostic and Spencer is going to be one to keep an eye on. That's quick on quick. One-handed. Wow. You see, Auburn, they're playing defensively. They're man-to-man. -man. Arkansas in a zone. They're going to dare Auburn to shoot the ball. Sydney Shaw is going to try it. It rattles out. It's an Auburn team that's 11th in the conference in three-point percentage. Bostic getting more aggressive again, coming off that season-high 18 points against Florida. This game going back and forth, SEC tournament. And that's going to be a travel by Emery Ellis. The attack. You beat pressure with pressure. First, Spencer for Arkansas on the drive, and then Bostic for the Auburn Tigers. Gives it back right there. That's why we're back and forth early now in this first quarter. Again, not surprised this is a close game. The last three meetings between these two have been decided by a possession. Right, yeah. Yeah, a total of seven points between those three. That's the spicy matchup we want. Ooh. See, Bostic gets right there at that SEC area, but she never looks at the rim. Savannah Scott powering up. It's going to be a battle of wheels because Auburn has the size where she could, they could play the power game of going inside, where Arkansas have the guards and can be play that outside type of game, shooting threes. It will be a matter of who can flex their will. Team Spencer in a bit of trouble. Seven seconds now on the shot clock. The one-handed pass to Michaela Daniels. Honesty, Scott Grayson. Looking for the buzzer. Can't drop it in. Just a one-point game after 10 minutes. Both of these teams looking to make it to the quarters. When we come back, Mike Neighbors joining Brooke on the other side. We've got us a one-point game after 10 minutes in the first one of the night session. Moments ago, Brooke caught up with Arkansas head coach Mike Neighbors. All right, coach, you talked about how important it was for your team to get off to a good defensive start. What's your assessment so far? It was okay. Just okay. I mean, we had a few, few breakdowns, a few forgets, but uh, pretty good for the first quarter. Starting to get some movement from the ball inside to out. How are you feeling about your shot selection? Not bad. Not bad. I mean, they're really hard to get a shot against, period, much less a good one. So, kind of like them. We missed a few that I think will make the rest of the game. Uh, Got to have to weather the storm and marry them in a little bit of foul trouble, but I like where they start. All right. Thank you. All right. Well, looking at this Arkansas team, Dowda is one of their, the two tied for the lead in scoring right now. She's got four points, but she's on the bench with two fouls. Well, she is the size and the length inside. That was the one player for Arkansas that could battle with the size of Auburn. So now that she has gone to the bench in foul trouble, I would expect there's going to be a lot more drive and kick action. And what Mike Neighbors told, just told Brooke Risebrod is, we missed some shots that we normally make. So we need some of those shots to go down. So the one-point game winner of this one moves on to the quarterfinals to face LSU tomorrow. Emory Ellis, the handoff to Michaela Daniels. That's a shot they normally hit, and she does. Michaela Daniels, a starter since day one. She has started every game that she's played in. She's their only graduate player, senior. This is her last year. Trying to make sure this is not her last game. Well, Mike Neighbors gave her the keys to the bus from the time that she stepped on campus at Arkansas, and she has been that leader. And he said when it comes to maintenance, she is zero. He said that she has just been a jewel to coach. Marshawn Bostic, a little flex, going to the free throw line. That's quickness on quickness. 
And Marshawn Bostic, when she gets the basketball, she can go anywhere with it she wants to. The focus and finish at the end, that's what the Auburn Tiger Tigers need. You know, we've seen Auburn a couple of times this year. Ironically, they're both meetings with LSU, but yeah. <laughs> she's grown a lot. I see her be more aggressive in this game and more physical. Coming off their last game against Florida, the rest of the team was struggling to score. Marshawn Bostic was not. She had 18 points, and a lot of that was scoring off of her defense. And so far today, Auburn has 10 points off six of Arkansas's turnovers. So Miriam Dowda is back in the game, number 30 in that red Arkansas jersey. She's got two fouls. It's a little risky now that they're matched up in a zone. Auburn's looks, got to attack that, right? Yeah, it looks like a diamond zone. And oh. that's her third. Oh, wow. That is her third. When she tried to come around, though, when you're hooking your arm, you've just got to put your hands up, like put your thumbs in your ears and move your body to get around the post player. When you start in, intertwining or intertangling arms, more times than not, the defender is going to be called for the foul. It's kind of like when I'm muscling you for elbow room yeah. sitting over here at the table. <laughs> That's why I sit in the front seat when we go in. <laughs> That's why I let you drive. <laughs> Down her right back out of the game. And Sam Spencer is fouled going up by McKenna Eddings. To get back to what I was talking about. Auburn, they can post up a big. Arkansas can spread the floor because everybody's a threat to shoot it. It opens the lane to drive. And this is what you do when you're in foul trouble. At the SEC tournament, you cheer your team on. Spencer misses the and one. Yeah, you see, this is a diamond, diamond defense, and diamond and one. The one is Michaela Daniels is on Honesty Scott Grayson. Mingo Young just taking it in there. Savannah Scott back up and out. Oh, it's a nice go screen, go screen action. And Emory Ellis lost it out of bounds. It'll be another turnover for Arkansas. That's their eighth. Do you like how Auburn attacked this diamond and one the last time down here? Well, they you're, you're driving into congestion. And what you've got to do is you've got to get the diamond offset so you can overload it, making the back of the zone have to come out. Then you can isolate Savannah Scott inside. Mingo Young, the kick back to Eddings for three. The first three for Auburn tonight. You see the difference in that speed. Marshawn Bostic. What a steal. And the finish. Oh, and that very easily could have been a foul. Mike Neighbors wants to call a timeout. Momentum with the Tigers. The offense is starting to click for Auburn. You got the jumper from the outside, then off your defense, coming in transition. Bostic going coast to coast with the sticky fingers has Auburn in control. dressed like we're doing this tournament in South Dakota. We're in Greenville, South Carolina. We are. And it's springtime. We've been yeah. here since 8 a.m. <laughs> it's a balmy 70 degrees. Winner of this game is going to face the Bayou Barbie, the defending national champion LSU tomorrow. Auburn and Arkansas battling right now. I'm going to tell you, LSU might be one of the last teams I would want to face. There's three. And it's, that you don't want to face? Yes. Okay. You got LSU, Ole Miss, and South Carolina. You know what the common denominator is? 
scary defense. Ooh. They all three teams really bring it. Hey, and we could not say that about LSU at the beginning of the season. No, Kim Mulkey, she said that was one of the things they needed to fix, and they were hitting their stride. They started in mid-February, and it has just continued to be on, turned upwards, getting better and better. This game has gone back and forth. Auburn and Arkansas. And Bostic travel. That'll be the third turnover by Auburn. When, when you're going against a box of one, and I, I like the idea of screening it, but you've got a screen and space. If you screen and stand, you're letting the defense do its job. But if you space out and make the defense have to rotate, that's where you're getting the openings, either for open shots or a drive. So Spencer in trouble. This is going to go Auburn's way. That's 10 turnovers now. You heard Nikki Fargus talking about Arkansas has got to take care of the basketball. Easier said than done. Yeah. Especially against this defense. Now Auburn's one of these teams that can be so pesky defensively. They're not afraid to take gambles, to be up in your space where you're trying to drive and just take it from you. Sydney Shaw, that rattles out into the hands of Michaela Daniels. Arkansas is shooting 53% from the field. Emory Ellis rolling to the basket short. Again, Ellis in because Miriam Dowda is out with three fouls already for Arkansas. They really miss having Dowda on the floor, but if you can develop layups, when you're filling in for somebody that's on the bench in foul trouble, you got to make layups. Spencer weaving herself to a bucket. And that's what Arkansas has got to do. Put, put Savannah Scott into as many ball screens as possible. Make her challenge having to guard those speedy ball handlers. will shoot from the elbow right over Sam Spencer. You see Scott in the ball screen. Two no good from Spencer. Shaw crushes her second. Honestly, Scott Grayson was right here in front of us when Shaw lined that up. She's just started heading the other direction. That's how much confidence she had she knew it. in her teammate. Shooters respect shooters. Hey, game <laughs> knows game. Jump ball. This one will stay with Arkansas. Shaw lines up, toes it behind the three-point line and knocks it down. Auburn's hit two threes. Arkansas has also hit two threes. But again, this is an Arkansas team that averages almost nine made threes a game. That's 15th in the nation. This is another ball screen. Oh, Daniels used all of it. It was a good look at the basket. Can't finish. Yeah, they're getting all the looks they want. Putting Scott in those ball screens, but you got to make layups. Eddings off the mark. Carly Johnson in, is swatted away. Taylor Collins with a hand up there. And Mingo Young turns it over. Oh, offensive foul on Michaela Daniels. Her first. Jemaya Mingo Young, but she took one for the team right there, rotating in. Jemaya Mingo Young, a player that started her career at Mississippi State when Johnny Harris was an assistant there. Then transferred to Alabama and now playing her final year at Auburn. 
a lot of experience. Mingo Young. And new experience, guys, as the, the point guard, because she said she's actually learning that position right now. And she came over, of course, with a relationship to Coach Johnny. So she, she's trying to learn, and she said the hardest part is knowing how much accountability you have when you play this position. Right, as a scoring guard, a shooting guard, we're just over there like, give us the ball, and we'll put it in the hole. Now you got to deal with everybody and know where everybody needs to be. Yeah, and Mississippi State and Alabama, she was required to do more of the scoring. Well, she's got a score next to her with Scott Grayson, so she's got to find that happy balance. Carly Johnson, Auburn making a, that a really tough shot. Off the back of the iron. I just wonder if Auburn is thinking pressure. They're so close right now in the NCAA tournament. Want to secure that spot, and a win today would definitely do that. Now Charlie Cream has them as one of the last four buys as an 11 seed. Arkansas not in the tournament field. Emory Ellis at the buzzer, no. Three minutes for Arkansas without a bucket. They've missed their last six. <laughs> Mingo Young's like, finally! A 9-0 run for Auburn. Almost a four-minute scoring drought, though, for Arkansas. And they've had the looks. Layups. Not just open shots, layups. They're 5 for 14 on layups. Sydney Shaw held up the three in the air before it even hit the net. A 12-0 run for the Tigers. Most teams coming in for the first day don't shoot it so well. Well, Auburn shooting 43% from the floor. They must have had a really good shoot around. <laughs> <laughs> and 43% from the three-point line. Oh, Emory Ellis finishing through contact. So that's the second on Eddings. Yeah, Sydney Shaw has been the answer from deep for the Auburn Tigers. And Johnny Harris is like, yeah, need the offense to be working. But Ellis is trying to keep Arkansas in this thing, holding down the paint for the Razorbacks. Now she's had a lot of play a lot of minutes here in the first half because of foul trouble for Miriam Dowda. Could have gone two for one if they'd come down looking for a quick shot, but they're going to try now to use up the rest of the clock to end this half. And Bostic will take her time. There's Scott Grayson. Shaw for three in the corner, no. And now Arkansas can take the last shot. And they should hold it. And boy, did Arkansas need that. It may not have been how the coach drew it up, but once Spencer let it go and went through the nuts, yet through the nets, yes, you'll take it. 17 points off of Arkansas turnovers for Auburn. Honesty, Scott Grayson standing by with Brooke. Honesty, how is that offense working? You guys creating from your defense, getting those turnovers. How does that feel? Um, just being patient and, you know, going through our options uh, with whatever we have. Um, trying to feed it a little bit more into the middle, but also knowing that we got the outside shooters. So. Your mid-range jumper is looking nice down there. What's working for you to get some open shots? 
Um, just using my screens and just using my teammates. Um, they rim it in and out, but I just got to keep shooting. That's it. All right. Thanks, Honesty. You still got that, Jack? Back here in the night session of the SEC tournament, Samara Spencer, the only player in double figures in the first half with 11 points, hit a big three at the buzzer. Her coach, mic'd up, we go inside the Arkansas huddle. Wait on the screen. You got a little bit happy feet. Wait on the screen, set it up. Rips and throughs and overs and unders more than dribbling in one spot. Use your dribble to go at the rim, okay? We got great shots. Get those same shots right here. We don't have to isolate the switch on the very first move, okay? She was still kind of moving. Let her get set. Throw it to the next person. Yeah, and that gives Keith a chance to sell the shot or throw it in there. Courtney Lyle, Carolyn Peck, and Brooke Weisbrod with you. You heard Mike Neighbors saying happy feet. I don't think he's talking about the movie with the Penguins, Peck. So what is he talking about in this game? Well, the main thing that Mike Neighbors is concerned about is using screens. He feels like ball screen action would be really good going against Auburn's defense. And he talked about you don't have to isolate on that first action, but to be patient. But he doesn't want Dada to pick up any extra fouls. Told her not to get happy feet. She's got to keep those feet set. Yeah, she already has three fouls. Meanwhile, for Auburn, Marshawn Bostick, she just made things happen. Six points, two assists. Look, Auburn already has 17 points off 11 turnovers that they have forced on Arkansas. And Marshawn Bostick had a lot to do with that. She got quick hands, great anticipation. Can we slow that down? I want to see that again. Look at this. She eyes it, taps it, comes around to the backside, always eyes on where the basketball is, picks it up, and is quickly heading the other direction. So a close, a close game here as we get set for the start of the third quarter. Honesty, Scott Grayson had four points in the opening half, and this is going to stay with Auburn. Well, defensively for Arkansas, whenever Odyssey Scott Grayson has the basketball, number one in the first half, they were in a diamond or a box and one on her. That time against the zone, whenever she touches the ball, two people are going to be in her company. Auburn working in transition, trying to get up ahead to Yakaya Milton, and it's a turnover. I was just thinking the way Marshawn Bostic played that first half, I would have started her coming out of the locker room and look how quick she came in the game. Yeah, she'll replace Honesty Scott Grayson. Winner of this game moves on to face LSU tomorrow in the quarterfinals. You know, Honesty Scott Grayson didn't score in their last game against Florida very well, and it was Marshawn Bostic. And I think that Johnny Harris sees that her quickness can benefit the Tigers. Jemiah Mingo Young hit in stride. And when Mike Neighbors say in that timeout, don't pick up your dribble. Be more patient. Wait till screens are set. Brooke, we were talking about that. The screening, the, the communication, what you have to have between the guards and the posts. You know, when you, you think about the guard to post screen action, of course, I go over to CP and I'm like, hey, you know, is it hard to learn how to be patient to set a screen? And then CP, what'd you hit me with? Guards got to use the screen. Don't make me have to move <laughs> and I won't. <laughs> so we got to wait for you to get over there and get set, right? And then y'all got to st stick around and we got to use you. So I totally agree. It's a team effort, Brooke, just like here tonight. I know that's right. An underrated skill, too. <laughs> Traveling violation will be a turnover for Arkansas. Ten assists for Auburn on 16 made field goals, sharing the basketball here. Taylor Collins. And it's a turnover. Now, Arkansas right now is, or Auburn, looking to continue to attack and get shots on goal, shots at the rim. But you got to take care of the basketball, understanding that Arkansas is going to sag off and force those outside shots. And Auburn already has three turnovers in the third quarter. This just turned into a volleyball game. Yakaya Milton swatted that into the cheerleaders. 
Look, this isn't a freshman anymore. Milton comes across the lane. Top Shelf said, uh-uh, don't bring that stuff in here. Back-to-back -back starts for Milton. She was a volleyball player in high school. I think this young woman is going to be something special. I mean, I've watched her do post-workout. She's got a quick jump off the floor. That second jump, kind of like what an Angel Reese has. Ooh. That's special. You dropping the Bayou Barbie's name in here? Absolutely. I mean, there's not many that rebound the basketball the way Angel Reese does, but I think that Milton, she could have that knack. We got to see the block again, right? Watch this. And I mean, she catches it in the air. Up. Boom. No. What do you call that? That's a kill. That's in volleyball, a kill, right? Oh, look at you. Oh, yeah. Multi sport athlete. Lots of knowledge. Yeah. You don't even know. <laughs> little, a little known fact Peck was a swimmer also back in the day. Swimmer, volleyball, yeah. clogger. Put it all out I'll there. Put it out there. <laughs> <laughs> I tried baton once, it didn't go well. Is that how you got a black eye? Yes. <laughs> the guards Keats wait on the screen. She took off a little soon. Dowda launches the three. Had a good arc on it. Rims out. Here's Bingo Young. Tipped away by Michaela Daniels. Oh, and again, layups have been a problem for Arkansas in this game. Well, don't forget, we have one more game for you tonight, and the Commodores are in the house. They will take on Florida Vanderbilt, making its debut in the tournament. That's coming up next, about 25 minutes after we finish this game. Shay Ralph has done a tremendous job with these Vanderbilt Commodores. This is the highest seed they've had in the SEC tournament since 2011. And they're trying to get back in the NCAA tournament for the first time since 2014. Charlie Cream has them in right now. Last four in. A win here in the SEC tournament would definitely help that resume. Arkansas two for its last 15. Jenna Lawrence lets it fly in her first career start. She started in the place of Salem, Sailor Poffenbarger out with a concussion today. Sydney Shaw looking baseline too much. Yeah, can Arkansas take advantage with Odyssey Scott Grayson not on the floor? And Michaela Daniels is going to draw the foul. That's on Marshawn Bostic. We mentioned some bubble teams. We got a lot of teams trying to bolster their resume here at the SEC tournament. Auburn is the last four buys. We mentioned Vanderbilt, one of those last four in teams. Texas A&M got the win over Mississippi State earlier today, so that helps the Aggies' cause. I think also that what the committee is going to look at is how these teams finished last 10. And Mississippi State, they're going to have to make that argument of, but they beat LSU in the regular season. Not too many teams can say that. Now they haven't had the strongest finish to the year, talking about Mississippi State, especially with the loss today. I think Texas A&M helped themselves having India Rogers back and how they played today. It's pretty impressive. Janiah Barker was really good for them today. Second foul whistled against Taylor Collins. And Charlie Cream has nine teams from the SEC getting into the tournament. You know, when you look at it, you say, well, if it were only seven and you took out, who would replace them? Well, I think that that's the harder part. I think that there are other teams that have had some ups and downs this year that the SEC teams can make a case where they should be in. 
Carly Johnson attacking the basket, and she will go to the free throw line. That foul is against Jemiah Mingo Young, her first. We, this is what we expected, for it to be not pretty and close. Because that's every time these two teams meet, that's what it looks like. You've got a strong offensive team in Arkansas, strong defensive team in Auburn, and they're both trying to really impose their will. Johnson misses both. Meanwhile, Auburn has not scored in over two minutes. Honestly, Scott Grayson only four points, and she's on the bench. That's the fourth foul on Miriam Dowda of Arkansas. She has been limited due to foul trouble in this game. Picked up three of those in the first half. So Emery Ellis is heading to the scorer's table now for Mike Neighbors' team to check in and replace Dowda. Savannah Scott comes in for Auburn to replace Collins. Well, now with Dowda going to the Arkansas bench, Johnny Harris puts in Savannah Scott. So now she wants to play with having more of a dominant center on the floor. But what happened in the second quarter? Arkansas put Savannah Scott in ball screens. So now, how is she going to defend that? Is she going to step back and let the defense go through? Is she going to hedge? But that's what Mike Neighbors talked to his players about is you don't have to attack that initial switch or isolation. Be patient and see what develops. Boston good for two free throws. Spencer had 11 points in the first half, hasn't scored in the third quarter. And it's Auburn basketball. Well, teams are feeling it. A close ball game in the SEC tournament. Both of these teams fighting for a spot in the quarterfinals to take on LSU here in Greenville. tournament first game of the night session our third game of the day and Arkansas dealing with a lot of injuries Taylor Poffenbarger out tonight with a concussion she averages a double double those rebounds so critical for this Arkansas team and keep in mind too, Talia Scott who has not played for Arkansas since February 12th is still dealing with a serious family issue so she's not here she dropped 33 in the last meeting with Auburn this freshman was averaging 22 points a game she's made 52 threes on the season so that really would help this Arkansas offense and Arkansas has gone back to a zone. Looks like a straight 2-3. Well, there's no honesty Scott Grayson on the floor. They were using a box and one or a diamond and one on her. Now, Eddings can shoot it. They know that Bostic wants to drive it. Three seconds. And an offensive foul on Marshawn Bostic. Johnny Harris said in the offseason with Bostic, what she's going to work on, they worked on form shooting last summer, where you're just stationary, elbow over the knee, follow through. Now it's going to be coming into your shot off the bounce and then gathering all that together, stopping your momentum and going into your jumper. Carly Johnson stuck in the lane. Spencer steps into it. Back 
the other way for the Auburn Tigers, who haven't had a field goal in five minutes. There it is, Jemiah Mingo Young. And just patience. Nothing forced, just easy using the screens. Now, Arkansas could do that on their end as well. You just got to be patient, let the screen get set. Emery Ellis with a block under the basket. Jenna Lawrence. She was looking around like, is it okay? Oh, yeah, let me pull the trigger. <laughs> She's tied her season high with 10 points. Like her shot looks accurate. It looks, she knows that she is a shooter. She should not question it. She's open. Let it fly. Up and in for Savannah Scott. And Mike Neighbors calls a timeout. Arkansas wants to talk about it. Auburn up here in the third quarter. Angel Reese, a nightmare when you've got to try to say, quote, keep her off the glass. Yeah, she is the SEC Player of the Year. Michaela Williams, the SEC Freshman of the Year. We'll get to see Leilani Correa coming up in our nightcap, playing for Florida, the sixth woman of the year. And then, of course, South Carolina's got a couple awards in there, too. Don Staley, Coach of the Year, and Camille Cardoso, the Defensive Player of the Year. There's Kim Mulkey. I don't know if I've seen her smile that much during the tournament. Well, they're not playing today. Oh, well, that's a good reason you can <laughs> smile. So jump ball, possession arrow pointing towards Auburn's way. And keep in mind, this Auburn team has played really close LSU in both regular season meetings. If they were to win today, it'd be a rubber match. They tomorrow. beat them by five. Yeah. Then they lost to them by five. So the most dangerous thing is that gives Auburn the confidence they can play with the defending national champions. In and out for Carly Keats. Can Auburn get Scott Grayson going? She's over in the corner at the top of your screen, 23 and white. That one rolls around the rim and off for Mingo Young. Scott Grayson just four points. Keats in the corner, no. She had 27 points the first time around against Arkansas, just four tonight. And keep in mind, she's had 15 points or more in 15 of their 16 SEC games. Nobody for Auburn tonight has hit double figures yet. Marshawn Bostic's close with eight, and Sydney Shaw, or with nine, Sydney Shaw has eight. Shots aren't falling right now for Arkansas. Johnny Harris will take a timeout here. Auburn trying to make it back to the NCAA tournament for the first time since 2019 right now. Charlie Cream has them as an 11 seed. The last four buys, that's where Auburn is. We have a net ranking of 44. They finished the regular season with wins over Texas A&M, Mississippi State, and Florida. Florida, who advanced to playing tonight, will play Vanderbilt. That definitely helps. Every time somebody you beat, they win, that helps your resume. A lot of good milestones for Auburn this season. They picked up their fourth top 25 win under Johnny Harris when they defeated LSU in January. Second most SEC home wins with six this year. Now let's Scott Grayson create. Celia Sumbane 
No, but she's got some help because Yakaya Milton was waiting on the other side. And Milton saw her when somebody drove. Milton anticipated to that backside to be in rebounding position. Arkansas two minute scoring drought. And Michaela Daniels forcing the foul. It's going to be whistled against McKenna Eddings for third. And Daniels has had a tough night from the floor. She's two of nine. Arkansas has not hit a free throw tonight. A team that usually shoots 73% from the charity stripe. Wow, they're 0 for 6. They're fifth in the SEC in free throw makes per game. They usually hit about 14 free throws a game. There's their first make. It always bothers me when a team puts a shooter at the line and everybody back. It's got to be distracting to the shooter. Why does it bother you? Because it's not normal, it's not natural. You're used to having people around you when you yeah. shoot the ball. Yeah. I think I might just need that moral support. You don't want to be up there by yourself? No, I like a show. <laughs> I like an audience when I'm putting on a show. Turnover by Auburn. Arkansas has got 10 seconds to work with here. Lawrence will take it, no. Scott Grayson at half court off the mark. But after three quarters, Auburn up 44 to 35. When we come back, Brooke catches up with Auburn head coach Johnny Harris. Ten minutes to go to decide who moves on to the quarterfinals. Moments ago, Brooke caught up with Auburn's head coach, Johnny Harris. Coach, getting a lot of support from bench points, but how would you like to see Honesty Scott Grayson get more involved in the offense here in the fourth? She just got to work harder to get open. They're staying with her, but they're not denying her. So she just got to work harder, get open, and then make better decisions when she gets the ball. What do you like about your team's defense and how you can close it out defensively in the fourth? I don't like it right now. We're not playing very hard. We got to play harder. Thanks, Coach. Peck, they're giving up 35 points. That's all. There is a standard That's that right. Johnny Harris has <laughs> set. And it doesn't matter how many points they have, lack of points they've scored, if she feels like her team has, can play better, they need to. But the bright spot is the bench has played and I said B-E-N-C-H yes. has played extremely well for Auburn. You've got Marshawn Bostic. You have Eddings that has come in. Savannah Scott's come in. The bench for Auburn has scored 20 points compared to only two from Arkansas. Now that depth helping Auburn as they go to their reserves here. 10 minutes to go to decide who faces LSU in the quarterfinals tomorrow. And you, you heard Coach Harris say, honesty, Scott Grayson, work a little bit harder. We'll see if she does that in the last 10 minutes to get open. Well, and if Johnny's not pleased with your performance, I don't care if you're the leading scorer on her team, you need to take a seat and reevaluate how hard you're working because you may be able to. Now, there's still a whole nother quarter, but if you're able to advance, don't think you can turn it up to face LSU tomorrow. You've got to get the job done today. You know, can't be looking ahead, even though that would be uh, the third meeting this season against Honesty's old coach, Kim Mulkey. She started at Baylor for Kim. Well, that's playing at the next level, especially if you're wanting to go play pro. You can't just get fired up on certain against certain opponents. You've got to bring it night in and night out. Sumbane hits the deck for Auburn, and the foul whistled against Carly Keats, her first. If you're just tuning into this one, Arkansas shorthanded again. Sailor Poffenbarger out in concussion protocol today. Talia Scott still not with the team. Dealing with a serious family issue. She's their leading scorer at 22 points a game. Now Arkansas has just had a, a tough night. They're shooting 33% from the floor. They've got 14 turnovers. They're taking a look at the clock. 20 seconds on the shot clock now. 
And you got to look too for Arkansas's offense, just six of 20 on layups. Shaw dumping it off to Collins, moving it around to Kaylin Duhon. The depth has definitely been to the advantage of Auburn. Duhon has come in ready to play, bringing the energy. And it's nice to have her back. She didn't play in their last game, was dealing with a bit of a knee issue. Tried to go, but couldn't. And I think that they're going to need her to have a late run in March. It's going to be a blocking foul on Sydney Shaw. One more game to go. Kelly Ray Finley and her Florida Gators walking in. They got a win last night over Missouri. Maybe it was yesterday afternoon. I'm not sure, but they did get a win. <laughs> they did. And the Gators coming in. Aliyah Matharo, Leilani Correa. Correa, sixth woman of the year in the SEC. Yeah, she had six, uh, 15 points yesterday to help Florida advance to face Vanderbilt. That'll be 25 minutes after this game is done. Thirteen points for Sam Spencer. <laughs> Auburn's got to solve the riddle of this zone. Five seconds. Duhon will shoot. Yeah. Riddle answered. Well, right in the, the, that elbow area, if you can get the ball in the middle of the floor, that middle third lane area, you can you can give yourself options of how you can score against the zone. Those two make it 24 bench points now for Auburn. Ooh, I'd like to see that again. They're going to count this bucket, and it's a blocking foul against Caitlin Duhon. Remember, the arc on the circle does not apply to women's basketball, so ignore that. So did Duhon, she, I thought that she had established legal guarding position. But did she get there before Michaela Williams, or Michaela Daniels left the floor and went up in the air to shoot? I thought she was there. Nevertheless, they call this a blocking foul on Caitlin Duhon, her first, and it puts Daniels at the free throw line. Three-point play. from scoring, if they can get to where they can score and find where their offense is going to come consistently, they can be a very dangerous team. Jenna Lawrence, no fear in that freshman. And Mike Neighbors calls timeout. Look at Jenna Lawrence go, the freshman. She's in the double figures. Three threes in her first career start. Light it up. Jenna Lawrence hits the sixth three of the night for Arkansas as they try to climb back into this one in the second round. We go inside the Razorback huddle with Mike Neighbors. Great looks. Great looks. He takes them. Keep playing defense. I'll take a timeout at seven and a half, and then we'll take one at two and a half. We'll win this thing at the buzzer, just like we did against Texas a and One possession at a time. All right, so breaking it down into small chunks. 
Well, yeah, because you have a uh, limited number of players, fatigue can set in. So if they have a goal, they know. He told them at seven and a half he was going to call that timeout because that was before that timeout. And they're going to call another one at two and a half. So he is asking his team or employing them to give him, give him four or five minute stretches at a time. All you got, leave it on the floor. Meanwhile, on the other side, Auburn has hit its last three shots. Oh, and Caitlin Duhon just found herself alone under the basket. Terrific. After the timeout, execution by Auburn. Players went to the floor and did exactly what Johnny Harris asked them to do. Mingo Young pushing it ahead to Duhon in transition. Eight points for Duhon in this quarter. Keats in the corner, no. Arkansas has gone back to a man-to-man. -man. We've seen all kinds of defenses from Arkansas today. Collins on the roll. And Auburn's got a rhythm. Well, Scott Grayson's not been able to get open to score it, to assist it, to set up somebody else. Look, that's a good thing. Well, she's got three assists on the night. Mingo Young diving on the floor with Sam Spencer. And he'll stay with Arkansas. Arkansas had to get out of the zone because what Auburn's going to do, they're going to send two, co two cutters to overload and pull the defense away. So when the cut happens, it leaves Duhon down low all by themselves. And then push. Coming in transition. Duhon has been a bright spark for the reserves for the Auburn Tigers. Oh, and Sam Spencer is being helped off the floor right now for Arkansas. They're holding her left arm and they'll take her back to the locker room. Oh, you hate to see that. Looks like she got her hand rolled up on. Mm. We'll keep an eye on her. She exits with an injury. 13 points on the night for Sam Spencer. She leads the team in assists. She has over 100 this season. Grayson short. That is got Mingo Young on her down low. And Jemaya Mingo Young did a good job of making that a hard shot. Oh. Well, she was the first one back, so she had to pick up Dada, but they didn't get her switched off. There's going to be a foul as Scott Grayson drives in. That's the third on Michaela Daniels. Miriam Dowda has been limited today for Arkansas due to some foul trouble. Picked up three fouls in the first half. Just four points for her, four rebounds. She's got four personal fouls at the moment. Duhon up through the double team, over to the free throw line. That's the first on Carly Johnson. You know, with the way that Arkansas teams in the past have been able to shoot the three, you would say with five minutes left to go, this game's not out of reach. But they've got to find a rhythm, and they haven't been able to find that yet. Brooke, have you gotten an update on Sam Spencer? Yes, I do. Just saw her walk out of the locker room uh, with one of the athletic trainers actually still holding her hand as they walked into the training room to receive some treatment. So I'll give you guys an update as soon as I have one. All right, thanks. We appreciate that. Hate to see Sam Spencer exit this game with an injury. Under five minutes to go to decide who plays LSU tomorrow in the quarterfinals. Foul on Jenna Lawrence, going over the back, her first. 
Yeah, if Arkansas is going to make a run, they've got to find a way to get stops and then come down and score on the other end. And if nothing else, yeah, and you want to get the three, but get yourself to the free throw line. And right now, Auburn's on a 7-0 run, and Arkansas hasn't scored in almost three minutes. And then for Auburn, they don't need to be in a rush. Execute and not turn the ball over. Shaw! All the confidence in the world, her third three-pointer tonight. That ties her career high. It's a 10-0 run for the Tigers. They have hit five threes tonight, shooting 41% from three. A team that shoots under 30% on the season from distance. They're being very disciplined of who and when those shots are taken. I think early on trying to figure out, or it was a free-for-all. Now understanding your percentages, your three-point shooters designated by coach and the percentages are the ones that should be taking those shots. And that's what you're seeing from Auburn. Carly Johnson misses. The free throw woes continue for Arkansas tonight. One of two. Florida getting set. Don't forget, 25 minutes after we finish this one, they will take on Vanderbilt. That should be... A good matchup. The Commodores won their last meeting, 63-57. Duhon, in and out. See, Arkansas's got to run in space. They need to look. Quick opportunities. Yeah, that's a travel. See Michaela Daniels go to Carly Johnson, reach out. Give her a little dap. The encouragement, the leadership that Daniels has brought throughout her whole career since she's been at Arkansas. And it could be her final game in the SEC tournament tonight. The player is in her fifth season again. Came in, started from day one, has been that leader, that steady presence for Arkansas. She holds the record, game started, played, and minutes played throughout her career at Arkansas. Jemaya Mingo Young by herself, the one to the bucket. And Daniels, ever since she was a freshman, she has been you know, that firecracker on the floor, competing every second that she's out there, given everything that she has had to this Arkansas program. Mingo Young off the mark and a smile on her face. She knew it. Now, Arkansas school record for career starts, for minutes played. Those numbers coming into tonight. She made the decision to come back for her fifth year because she loves Arkansas. She loves this program. Doubt it. Turnaround. Six points. Ask Mike Neighbors what is what are the plans for Michaela after college? Well, she may dabble in. She could go play at the next level, play overseas, and then he finally ended. And he said she could do just about whatever she wants to. Absolutely. Scott Grayson with six points now. And a good sign. Sam Spencer is waiting to check in at the table for Arkansas. That's great to see. She went out back into the locker room to get her left arm looked at. And I think Michaela Daniels is cramping right now. She will be. She's got to shoot the free throws. Spencer waiting to come in for her. Third foul on Taylor Collins here.
And Michaela Daniels, both her parents were in the military, and she's talked about, you know, they prepared her for pretty much anything. Ready to go, that discipline, that good foundation, she brought that to Arkansas, has been that mature player, and as Mike Neighbors has said, zero drama with Michaela Daniels. She goes about her business, she does it the right way, and what an asset she's been for the Razorbacks. Well, she's the epitome of the type of player you want to you want to coach, and especially at that point guard spot. And then other players that have come in, she's taken them under her wing to help them to develop and adjust to college. Yeah, Brooke, what Michaela has brought to Arkansas, just invaluable. I love that she said, I never even planned to transfer. She said, I feel good that I made the right decision and that Arkansas was the right place for me. She said, I've had to learn how to be the most vocal I've ever been with this young team, learn patience, learn grace, but I'm really proud of our willingness to stick together and, and to be a team. So she said, if we're struggling, we're gonna do this together. I love that. Yeah. Just, and you, that is the mentality you get from leadership. You can celebrate. She's had some great success here. This year hasn't gone quite as well as it has her previous four years, but she's given it her all. And she's fouled. It's a second on Duhon. Well, under a minute to go in this one, Auburn looking like they will be advancing and Johnny Harris is going to make a mass substitution and take everybody out. We've got a rubber match coming tomorrow. Yeah, you'll have Auburn facing LSU. For the third time, they split the regular season meetings. But you, you know, you know that feeling of Michaela Daniels of understanding this is your last collegiate basketball game got to soak in every moment of it because the next chapter in your life now begins. So it's been a slugfest, but Auburn looks like they're going to come out with this one. And they're a team that has played LSU close, not once, but twice. They have the game plan. They understand how they've got to defend the intensity and aggressiveness that they've got to come and bring, especially going against the post game that Auburn has and now facing the aggressive defense that LSU brings. Yeah, that win for Auburn over LSU on January 14th was their seventh win over a defending national champion in school history. I think a key piece for LSU is going to be last year Poa. When she comes in and running the point to allow Haley Van Lith to move over to that shooting guard spot. Spencer's shot is short, and Auburn can hang on to this one. Only giving up 48 points tonight, a win in the SEC tournament for the first time since 2020. They are in the quarterfinals for the first time since 2019. And we get the rematch for a third time with LSU. Hey, Johnny Harris wasn't pleased with the defense in the first half, but you hold a team to shooting 32%, only scoring 48 points. You've done something right, and that's something to build on as you advance to the quarterfinals. Three players in double figures for Auburn tonight. Jemiah Mingo Young, Sidney Shaw, and Marshawn Bostic all 